Hello everybody, today I'm sharing with you a project for Crafty Me Shop on Facebook. As, you, as some of you know, I get sent a lovely box of goodies and I make projects with them to show you what you can do with some of the things that you can buy there. And today is a, a little project but a very sweet project and it's made using the template I have on my Pinterest. Uh, printed out at half size. I will put a link to this template in the description box below so if you're interested in using it you can, it, it's free or you can simply draw your own. Very easy. The first thing I made was a little stick pin holder. It's made from the beautiful silk fabric from Crafty Me Shop. Absolutely gorgeous fabric. So soft and pretty. On both sides. It also has this beautiful pink trim here that I used from Crafty Me Shop. Absolutely gorgeous. Such a pretty colour isn't it? It's really beautiful and very very soft this one. I also used the flower of it here as well. Some Pico trim of my own and this lovely little silk ribbon embroidery piece that was from Crafty Me Shop also. This little beaded flower is a stick pin and I made the little flower center as you may recall on uh, one of my videos um, the one where I made the, the choker for my dress form and I've just placed it on top of a fabric flower and used it as a stick pin. I think that worked very very well. Just pop that back in there. And so I have a tutorial following but the tutorial is actually a little bit different. After making that I thought oh I could make a little needle book or a needle keep um, using the same you know the same idea. So this is the little needle keep. I've just put a couple of stick pins in there just to show you what it's for and it's exactly the same as that one but this one has a ribbon at the top and it opens up and it actually has a little like almost you could call it a booklet. Molly come on. You have your little wadding pieces inside so that you can put your needles or your pins and things like that. You just you just keep them in there. That's what it is. It's a needle keep. And this is just wadding inside. That's a thick pin so it's a little bit harder to get through. But that's the general idea. You could put as many pages in as you wanted. Um, I just put the two in there. I thought that was adequate and I thought that's a really lovely little gift to send to somebody, especially somebody who might really enjoy sewing. Or you could use the same concept as this. Instead of joining it at the toe like I did, you could join it at the heel and have it made into a little notepad, um, you know, just a little notebook for putting in your journals if you enjoy journal making. So that's my little project for today. I hope you like it and I do hope you enjoy the tutorial. Take care everybody. Bye bye. So the first thing you'll need is some cardstock. It's just a regular weight cardstock, nothing too heavy duty. And then I had my little um, inner sole of the boot and I will put a link to this in the description box below. It's part of the pattern for the boots I make and I had it on the desk and I decided to use this in one of my projects. So this is what I've done. So what you will need is to cut out four of these and all you need to do is get a pencil and trace around it lightly. Now this pattern is only on copy paper. Probably would be if you were going to make a few probably would be wise to have it on a proper template you know maybe cut an extra out of the card stock that way you'll have another one like this 
okay just so that it's a bit more durable than having to trace over that now I only we need four of these Let's see that is so much easier to trace around So go ahead and trace four of those and cut them out. Alright, they are all cut out and now what I'm going to do is get my fabric glue, which is the Helmar fabric glue. Um, use whatever glue you have. And I'm going to also get my fabric. I have a needle in that, okay. Um, decide which way you want to be using your fabric. I think that's the wrong side there. This is silk, so it does tend to fray a lot. So you don't want to be working too slow with it. So I have my wrong side facing up. So this is the right side I'm going to have. And this is the wrong side. And now all I'm going to do is get my glue. It doesn't matter which side you use. They're both the same. And just go around the edge of it with the glue. Like that little bit down the middle and then I'm just going to run my finger along it to smooth it out a bit like that and then I'm going to place it on my fabric glue side down leaving I've got a centimeter gap there so leave enough fabric around the edge because you'll be folding it over and then I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these and put them on the fabric like that. Now that that's all done, I also cut an extra shape out of the little shoe shape. And I've just cut a piece off the end of it. So if that goes there like that, I've gone to the widest part and I've just cut you know an angle out like that and that's going to be the top of the little slipper and what I'm going to do with that is use that as a template I had to, excuse me I had to get a fresh piece of cardstock out and where's my pencil I am just doing exactly the same thing whoops tracing around that like that and I'll keep that as my template and what I'm going to do as I cut up the front here I'm just going to splay it out just a little bit and I'll show you that in a moment So it's, can you see how I followed the line but then I've gradually come out just a little bit and that is so when it sits on the front here, see how it's a bit wider, when you glue it you'll kind of curve it up like that and so it will allow a little bit of room for you to pop your little cushioning behind it. So that's how you create that shape. Um, so I'm just going to use that. It doesn't matter about those pencil lines because I will, that will be on the underside. So I, this is the top of the slipper here. So I need to put glue on here just in the same way as I did the sole.
And the lovely thing about this is you don't need a lot of fabric or anything. You could even use paper. It's totally up to you. If you were using paper, it would probably be easier actually. Okay, so I'll just allow a little bit of a, a gap around it like that and let that let that dry. Okay, and that's the other side of our oops, I've got a sequin there. <laughs> so you can see them there, that's the correct side there. And all I'm going to do now is just go around, leaving a gap around it. It's probably best not to use a thick fabric on something like this because it can make it quite bulky. So this is um, a beautiful fine fabric. like that. On these corner pieces up here you're going to cut across. Don't cut right to the cardboard, just leave a tiny little tiny little gap. See there's just a tiny little gap there. The same on here. Just go across like that. So you've got that like that. Okay, um, now you can put little slits in the fabric here. I really don't find that necessary on this fabric. It Once again, it depends how um, thick your fabric is. You do need to put just a bit of a A little slit there as well okay just so that when we fold it over it's easy so you can do this in sections or all in one go but let me you go you pop that over like that and then you do the same on this side like that just press it down nicely. See, it gives a nice finished edge on the other side. And then you're going to go around and do exactly the same all the way around. You can trim that bit of fabric up there if you want to. I like to actually do the toe part and I push the toe like that first and then I kind of go like that for the edge on that side and the same there like that hope I'm in shot there and see how it'll leave these little creases don't worry about that at all at the moment you can run your finger up it and it will reduce those creases Okay, and then you can pop your glue on because this glue does dry quite quickly. It's best to put it on right before you're using it. Just smooth any wrinkles out like that. Like that. The same on this side. Let's just lift that part there up a bit. Of just roll it over with your thumb. You can use that any glue that oozes out a little bit, use that to glue the edges down. It will stop any fraying from occurring. So there we go. Now if 
you find your little edges on those corners are visible just trim them down just a little bit probably cut them on a, a wider angle in the first place and you wouldn't have to worry about that. It's the lovely thing about seeing other people do it, you can correct their mistakes too. Okay, like that. Now to get rid of these little wrinkles down here, just stand them up and pop your scissors on and just cut them. Be careful not to cut the cardboard and that'll help it like that. Okay, there we go. So that's, that's the front of our little scissors. Uh, <laughs> That's the front of our slipper and now I'm going to go ahead and use that same technique of just gluing and rolling it over and doing the toe in the same way all the way around these slippers as well and then I will be back. So just like that I've just left a little border all the way around and then they'll all be rolled over like that and I will do the toe the same way as I did the toe on the little front part like that and my little off cuts here will be going into my little snip jar and to be used in a future project so I'll go ahead and glue all that and then I will be back Okay, so that is all done now. We have our four little slipper pieces like that. And what I'm going to do now is get two of them. So just, um, they should be all, all the same, but it's always a good idea to make sure that you can match things up fairly closely like that. All right, so those two can go together and those two can go together and then get your little trim that you would like to put around the edge of it. Now I've got this lovely little trim and um, it's not elastic. I know the tag says elastic but it's an elastic company that would have produced it. This is a beautiful vintage a trim I found a few years ago. I've used it sparingly because I really do like it and although it looks a bit blue it's not actually blue um, it's it's like really shiny white that almost borders on a silver white and I'm going to put that all the way around I will probably start it at the heel like that and do it gradually because you're going to have to curve it around you know the corners. I'll, I'll start this one off and I might just take that off the, off the card. Make sure you've got enough to go around both though won't you? Um, so I'm going to start it here and don't use a trim that's too thick either. Both of these sizes sides look the same to me, so and I just want that little tiny pico edging popping out the side of mine. So I'm going to just lay it on there like that, and then I'm going to flip it over and make sure I've got the little edging just poking out like that and because I know that looks the way I want it to like the end piece there can come down a little bit I'll probably trim that little pico off the end there then I'm going to press it down 
so it will stay there and I'm going to do that all the way around just making sure I've got the little bit hanging out that I want hanging out of there and then I'll be back all right then so that's all done I have two pieces there and two pieces there with all the braid glued on I have found this lovely vintage ribbon it's a very pale pink pretty much identical to the pink of the slipper I'm just going to cut that in half because I don't really know how long I want them and then I'm going to glue one half there on one side And the other one on this side here like that and then I'm going to be gluing the top part in like that before I do though I just want to snip a little bit off these toes um, you can see going around I pinched the braid to make it go around neatly and now that the glue is dry there I just want to take that little bit off I haven't cut the edge of it I've just cut the little bit that was sticking up I'll see if I can show you on this one as well see how there's a little piece sticking up where I've pinched it I'm just taking that off like that so that it's no longer sticking up like that okay so we need our ribbon make sure that's straight okay. be a good idea and on that one And a ribbon on that one. Goodness. Make sure they're straight before they dry. <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's best to look from that side. Okay, so that goes there, that goes there. Okay, so before that dries, I'm just lifting that up again and putting a bit of ribbon in there, like that, and the same on this side. sure it's nice and straight okay so they're joined together nicely and now we're going to cut a piece of wadding and you're going to get your template you're going to cut a piece of wadding out like that to the same size or oh, it's a little bit bigger isn't it or thereabouts as your the same size as your template but you're not going to cut the toe area that is a piece of wadding folded over but see how the toe is still joined you need to leave the toe joined okay and now what we're going to do is I'm going to get pinking shears and I'm going to cut that a bit smaller because I don't want it the exact size of the slipper I want it to sit inside the slipper a little bit so I'm just going to trim a little bit off all the way around apart from where it's joined at the toe I'm just going to stop there okay flip it over take a little bit off if you find you haven't taken enough off 
then just go back and take another little bit off. If you don't want to use pinking shears, you don't have to use them. So before you go to the other side, just check that that will come inside of the slipper. I could take a little bit more off here. But then before I do that, just flip it because sometimes they fit better one way than the other. See, that's not too bad at all. Fold it in half like that and just use that as your guide for the other side. on our slipper. May need to take a little bit off here in the in the middle. Not a lot. I just need it so that it's going to look tidy but I don't want to take too much off that it falls apart. this beautiful um, piece here from Crafty Me Shop. It's a beautiful pale pink. It's absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to use this to decorate the slipper. But I think I might put one of those flowers right in the center there just to help to strengthen it a bit. We'll see if that will work. Just to hold, give that wadding a little bit more strength. Because although it, you know, it is strong enough, over time anything wears a little bit. So just to help it out a little bit. I hope it works. stitch over it into the ribbon so what I'm going to do is just clip carefully let's just clip these on so it doesn't move around that and then I'm going to stitch that down the center and then I'll be back. I think I'm going to do it by hand. My machine is not threaded up in the right color at the moment um, but what I might do is just pop a little bit of glue on the petal parts here. Just a little bit. Wait. It's not going to move around too much either. Like that. Keep it. That will keep it where I want it to be. I hope. <laughs> Better keep my eye on that. Yeah, that way a bit more. Like that. Okay. I'm having my thread doubled. I think 
I'll just come up in the middle there first to anchor my knot. might be easier to glue this if you're not that into sewing. I do like sewing though. Let's see how that looks. a few little back stitches across the toe. that should help it to stay a bit stronger. opens up quite nicely like that. Okay. Oh, my hands have still got a bit of glue on them. Okay, I'll just put a couple more in the actual felt part of it. Okay. And that like that. And that will close like that. Oh, that looks pretty. Yes, yes, I quite like that. Okay. Um, now Choose your front. I want one of these. Isn't this just beautiful? It's lovely as pink. Perfect match. And I am going to be out slip a front on now okay so that will go like that oh it's pretty isn't it so we need to decorate this little bit here first and for that I'm going to be using this piece Okay, let's have a look. Thinking that a bit lower. Right. Perhaps like that. Okay, cut that end bit off. Cut that off. 
that. Make sure we've got it the right way. Okay, like that, like that. That looks about close. going to trim in there like that that way that can open up a little bit to cover up to those corners like that and then down the bottom I'm going to take that middle section out like that and that way when you put it on here like that that will close up for the toe. So by taking a piece out there you can make that more narrow and by putting a slit there you can make those that a bit wider at the top. You need to perhaps glue the toe on first. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the toe like that. And put that like that. Like that, but then pulling it together. Like that. I don't want to have to trim any of the other pieces up. I just want that bottom piece trimmed. That's not sitting flat. That might be better. Like that. Okay. And then turn it over and just carefully just trim it up a little bit. That just the toe piece. Like that. Like that. And then bit of glue will stop that from fraying. Just press it in, sort of mould it to the end of the little slipper. Okay, and that little slit can be taken a little bit lower, all the way down to the V on the front and see how that will open up nicely now, like that. And trim there a bit and trim there a bit like that. I'm going to just go up a bit of glue right along the edge there. And just lay that so that those little leaf bits fold around it, you know, like that, lay against the edge of that, and then do the same on the other side, and this is where you, you know, fabric glue really comes in handy, because hot glue, you can't really mould things as well, you can still do it with a hot glue. You still will be able to do it with a hot glue, but you just have to be careful with your fingers with hot glue. So I think all glues have their place, don't they? Just going to cut that a bit more there. Just 
play with it until you get it sitting nice the way you want it. See, I might not need that end one there. In fact, let's have a look. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, I think maybe that one has moved a bit. Let's Just glue any edges and tuck, tuck them in so they follow the shape of the, the little slipper. Because you don't want to lose the shape of the slipper. If you lose the shape of, of things, they don't look like the thing anymore, you know, if that makes sense. Lastly, we're going to just put a bit of glue underneath here and here. And fold that over. Now, wipe any glue onto the edges to help stop, stop any fraying of the lace as well. Okay, so that's the front of our slipper done. Okay, like that. Now we need another little bit of wadding. guess here a bit I think. So look. Cut like a triangle piece. Like that. So it's smaller than the actual slipper, but we don't want it hanging out the edge, so that needs to be a bit smaller. Like, is that going to work? I think that might work. A little bit more narrow. And you're going to have to just size this as best you can to match your because they will all turn out different sizes. Okay, let's have a look. And I want another one. So, but just one, one little piece now as well, I think. that inside just to give it a bit more thickness I think. So we've got three layers of wadding there. Okay and I think what I'm going to do because I don't particularly want want too much glue going on here so I'm just going to quickly put a, th a couple of quick stitches here to hold them together and they just have to be like big basting stitches 
that's all just to hold it all together just so we don't have to use too much glue in this particular part because this is where you're going to be sticking pins in and you can't stick pins in very well where there's glue so we need to keep that in mind so that's just some really big stitches nothing nothing hard at all and that will keep it all together Because if you have a bit of sponge or something thick you won't have to do that but that's the general shape you need something to go behind the toe part there okay so curl it a bit like that okay curl it a bit like that now we are going to glue this part and it's okay to glue this part but we don't want any glue around you know where you're sticking things in so we can put a little bit of glue on this part because this is not where the needles will be going so just putting a bit of glue like that leave make sure you've got that little edge a little edge you don't want your don't want the wadding going all the way to the edge let me see, let's say that is easy you'll be able to pin pins in there quite nicely okay time is it I've taken mine right up my wadding is right up to there because you, you kind of need to use as much space as you can. Now we're going to attach this onto here to make our little slipper. Okay, so decide which you're going to have as your front and which you're going to have as your back. So I think we'll stick to this one. Move all your little pages to the back and we're going to look like that okay and then we're going to get our glue and I think I'm going to put glue on this part that way I know where my glue is So we're going all the way down the side, around the toe and back again with our glue. And placing the toe on the toe. And then go up to the side like that. Now I've got some little clips. If you've got some little clamps or something, just to hold it in place while that glue dries it would be good. Uh, pegs do a great job as well. Pegs that's what I always used to use for things before I got little clamp these little clips so just maneuver it. Where's the rest of it? Maneuver it around so it fits onto the slipper and as it's drying just keep coming keep checking it that it's not lifted up or anything like that and you can meld it to sort of sh fit around the slipper as it's drying I might want that down a little bit but on the toe there I think so we'll do that you want to be able to see that little bit of trim around there as well like that keep pressing it down as it dries like that 
Okay, and that won't take too long to dry at all. But it's best not to take them off until it's completely dry because you don't want, you know, you don't want it coming up at all. And for the front here, I have this beautiful little embellishment from Crafty Me Shop. I love this. It's so pretty. It's just a little ribbon embellishment. Isn't that beautiful? I'm quite sure it's a vintage one. It's just so pretty. And so that is what I'm going to put on the front of my little slipper here. Okay, so that will disguise that little bit of wadding that we can see anyway. And I'm going to just curve that across the front. And I'm going to use this flower here. Okay. And I think that is going to go up there on the heel. Like that, that's very pretty. I can put that there now because I can. It's not in the way of the other toe part. Uh, how do I want that like that? No, I want it like that. there. And I need something in the center there. Uh, okay. okay. I've got a little flower. These are just little flowers from a cheap branch of fabric flowers I got from the local scrapbooking shop. They were bright white so I tea stained them and they look really pretty now. Oh, that one might be a bit better that one. Okay. Um, and you get so many and they look really pretty. So I might use that little flower. Um, I've got a sequin. Here. That's a Crafty Me Shop sequin. What else? I need a bead. Got a lot of beads. So let's get one of these out. And see, so this is what I can do well. Oh, hang on, one just fell out, so we'll use that one. Okay. Have any thread? Oh no! I've got no thread on my beading needle, and they're so hard to thread sometimes. Oh well, let's put a big piece on so someone next time I need to use it. Now, with a beading needle, please excuse the glue on my hands. You do, well I do, I don't know about everybody, but I definitely need a needle threader to thread a beading needle because I, I can barely even see the hole in the needle. They're so fine, but you need a beading needle to get through those tiny beads. Okay, so the needle threader goes through. It doesn't always go all the way through with beading needles because they're so fine. Get the end of your thread and thread it. That needs trimming. If the end of your thread is fluffy, cut it on an angle to get it off. You cut your thread on an angle, it's much easier to thread through things. Okay, so I've threaded it through. Can you say that? Uh, like that. There's the bead thing. Thread's gone through that side of the needle. Now all I do is pull that through and it will thread my needle for me. Just in case you don't know how to do that. Okay, so I think I will take 
a double strand. Where is it? Oh, here. Fiddly work. I just take a quick little stitch in the back of my flower there. Oh, I knotted it. So it anchors it a little bit. It's not actually knotted or anything because I'll tie it off in a moment. So I've got my tail. Fiddly stuff. Okay. So no tangles. Come through the hole in the flower like so. Get your sequin, put the needle through the sequin, upside down. The cup goes up. Sequins are shaped like a cup. And so you want the cup, you know, the dish part facing up. Let's see if we can get this bead on this needle. So we've gone through the sequin, now we're going through the bead. Okay, there we go, there they both are. I'm going to bring those down closer to the flower and then what I'm going to do is skip the bead and go back through the sequin like that okay go back through the sequin and then back through the flower like that and then we have a flower with a sequin and a pearl on it. Alright, so you, oops, just a moment. Sorry about that. Um, and now I'm just going to, to knot that off underneath so that we don't lose our bead and sequin. Ow! These needles are so sharp. Okay, just a couple because I'm going to put a bit of glue behind there anyway. Oh, I've got the wrong glasses on just a moment. Can't see. Find things with those on. Oh. Cut those. Okay, that can have a little bit of glue on it now. glue on my hands and then put it into the middle like that and that will finish that off let's just check those they've been on a bit now remove those because we don't want permanent little marks in there so we don't want to lose, leave those on for too long. I would have liked to have taken those off a bit earlier. Never mind. Like that. Okay. Yes, I think I... Um, don't leave your clips on too long. I, my husband came home so I had to spend some time down there but um, don't leave them on too long. Hopefully that will you know fix itself over the next half an hour or so. So that's that. That's that. Now we're going to put this on which is just a matter of putting some glue on the back of it there, like that, I might do it the other way, oh glue, let's <laughs> have a look, so we want to get the pink one in the centre like that, 
and then just curve the others around. It's so pretty that little embellishment. A bit of ribbon embroidery. So pretty. that is our little needle book so obviously inside you put your needles like that in both of those I haven't got any new ones around here to show you that but that's how it goes and then that will tie in a you might as well do it <laughs> Make sure it works. So we have our, it looks like a little ballerina shoe, doesn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. Um, so that's that. I may sear the ends of the ribbon as well. And then let's make sure that's dry. It's like that. that and then of course in here you can put little stick pins and things let's see if we've got some these might be a bit big these ones I think I've only got some So it will hold quite a few little stick pins. Let's see what we've got over here. We've got, I don't know who these stick pins are from. They're, they're just all in together. And as long as your stick pins have a... That's pretty, isn't it? But that might be... Oh, no, that's not too big. Look at that. that even that one fits in there. As long as it's in the, the centre. There we go. Like that. What else have we got in here? Got a little angel. Whoops, that one's come undone. That can go like that one needs a bit of glue sticking it back on. Not sure where I got that one from. There's another one there. We put in. Just to show you, I would probably colour coordinate. Some stick pins don't have a good point on them too, so you're better off having stick pins that have a good point on them. But you get the idea, don't you? That that's where all your stick pins can go in the front there. And if you didn't want stick pins in the front there, it could be a place for all your little, you know, your everyday pins that you want to use although I think this sort of thing is more for a gift so you would you know a pretty stick pin would be lovely in there I've got a teapot one here that I was sent fill it up with special um, stick pins hello be careful there's stick pins there Molly what are you doing cleaning up for me you're going to move that rubbish yeah you're a good girl aren't you you need to sit there see that one's that's a pretty flower one you could put that one in there too oh what's this this is a pretty one there we go it gives you an idea doesn't it okay just fill it up with pretty stick pins it looks pretty on the side looks pretty on the back looks lovely on the front what do you think you like that you don't like the smell of the glue though do you darling <laughs> did you say hello yeah okay I hope you enjoyed that tutorial take care everybody bye